In this video, we'll look at two ways to manage files under version control, with the integrated repository browser and with an external subversion client. The default repository homepage contains a juicy bit of information that you'll be needing, the URL of the root of Polarian's subversion repository. I'm running Polarian in a local virtual machine, which is why the URL might look a little strange, but it works the same as a web URL. When I click on the link, I can see the repo folders and optionally explore them with my web browser. But for now, we just want to keep in mind this root URL because we'll want it when we work with an external client later on. For now, let's use Polarian's repository browser and explore the repo, find some source code, and just see what the tool can do. When I open the repository browser, you can see the same top-level folders we just saw in the web browser. Let's first go looking for some source code. Now, I happen to know there's some in the demo projects folder, so let's drill down into that. Here's our eLibrary demo project. Now, if you know something about subversion, you can figure your project sources might be in the trunk. So we'll drill down there, and sure enough, there's a source folder. Let's pause here and take a closer look at what the repo browser is showing us at this point. Path is like a breadcrumb trail. It shows us where we are and where we've been. We can easily backtrack to any folder just by clicking on it. It's important to note that this is not a URL. It's just the internal path in Polarian. The repository link here jumps back to the root folder, and it's the internal representation of what we saw over here which is the external URL of the repository root. Now I can use my back button to go back down into where we were so we can glance at a few other repo browser features. To the right on this path bar, there's a dropdown that gives you an express hop uh, from the trunk into branches or tags. There are, are no branches or tags in this path, so we won't waste time drilling into these. The browse link is useful for two things. If you know a folder path deeper in, um, maybe you have it on your clipboard, you can enter and jump right into it. Or, and this is maybe something you're more likely to want, you can drill right into a specific revision. We're at revision 190, so I could pop into 188, for example. Notice this label here shows we're now looking at revision 188. And let's hit the back button again and return to the head revision. The info in the header provides some details about the current folder. It's pretty self-explanatory, I think. The table then shows the contents of the current folder, files, and other folders. The main thing I should point out here is the link to the revisions list. This can take a few seconds for Polarian to pull together. The items in this folder haven't undergone many revisions, but if they had, we could browse the revisions and drill into the change history or download any of the revisions or compare selected revisions. If there were many revisions of this item, we could select range mode and take a look at just a few of them. Say revision 100 to 110, for example. These features you can explore more on your own now that you know about them. Let's go back and look at some of the actions available with folder content. When you're browsed into a folder, these icons provide several actions for the folder. There's again a way to get into the revisions. You can add a subfolder, called a directory here. You can add a file to the current folder. You can delete any items checked in the contents table. And finally, you can download the current folder as a zip archive. If we drill into a file, there's a different set of actions. You can access the files revisions, you can commit a local working copy of the file, or download a copy of this revision of the file. This drop-down shows us the current encoding of the file and lets us view it with a different encoding if we want to. And this drop-down shows a line-by-line -line view of who last changed each line of the file and when. So we've seen that the repo browser is mainly that, it's a browser with a few basic subversion actions like add, commit, and delete. Let's now look at how an external subversion client can work with Polarian. Let's start by drilling down and locating some source code files. It's a little tedious, but you may possibly need to do this to find sources sometime, so we'll quickly wade through it. I'll go into source, main, java, 
com. It's a typical Java structure, as you can see. Polarian, demo, and here's some Java source code files. We want to set up an external subversion client to work with these. We know the internal repo path and how to get to it, so we can then go to our browser view and drill down the same way. Demo projects, e library, trunk, source, main, java, com, Larian, demo, and when we finally get there, the browser navigation very nicely shows us the exact URL of the folder we need to check out with the external client. So let's copy that to the clipboard. Let's look at Tortoise or Tortoise SVN, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, as it's quite a popular client. Here in Windows Explorer, I already have a folder where I want to check out a local working copy of the source files in the Polarian repo. If you know Tortoise, you know it's quite easy. You just run SVN checkout from the context menu, paste the URL of the repository folder, which we copied from the browser navigation, if you remember, and away we go with the checkout. Now, if you use a different client or the command line, you just run the SVN checkout command on some empty local folder specifying the URL of the sources in your Polarian repo, which you now know how to find. From here, you're in business. Start coding away in your favorite IDE and use Tortoise or your favorite client to manage sources in your Polarian repo. Just one more small but very cool trick before we wrap up. Let's say I modified book.java, adding another field, ISBN num. Let's say I did that because there's a work item in Polarian assigned to me to do it. And so let's look at Polarian again and go to work items. And for now, we can just pick any one. Uh, we copy the ID. And then back in Tortoise, when I commit the change, I just cite the work item ID in the commit message. Then after the commit, if we go back and refresh the work item, the revision I committed is automatically linked. My project manager is really happy because we've got traceability going, and I'm happy because that was super easy. To wrap up, let me just mention a couple of extensions you might want to look at. If you search our POP extensions portal for IDE, you'll find some integrations for Eclipse and Visual Studio that enable you to access your Polarian work items from these IDEs. Both of them have integration with subversions, so with one of these extensions, you'd be able to do the commits and revision linking we've just seen without ever leaving your IDE. That's it for this tutorial. We hope you found it useful. Use the comment form on the web page and send us your feedback, or if you have questions or need help with anything, write us at info at polarian.com.